Welcome back to Tai Tech. In this video, I want to do a teardown of this 6 volt lantern battery. I want to see what it looks like inside, and I want to see what makes this work, and see if there's any parts inside that are worth salvaging. Let's get started. First, I'm going to take this slit screwdriver, and I'm going to place it right here on the seams of this battery. And I'm hoping that it will just pop right off, because it looks like it's just glued together. I'm going to take a hammer, and just do a few taps. And there, it opens up that easily. Oh, how very interesting. It appears that this battery contains four 1.5 volt cell batteries that create six volts. These ones right here are very big, which means it can hold a lot of power for a long period of time. It looks to me like the metal may contain zinc and the interior may contain manganese dioxide. And it also looks like there's carbon electrode rods. Oh, how interesting. Four little pockets inside the housing. Looks to me like this could make a very useful pin holder. Simply take your pins and place it in just like this. Hmm, that's very useful. Okay, so there's already one use for the housing. So I'll put that to the side. Measuring the voltage. And as you can see, it measures roughly five to maybe six volts. It's probably messed up because these battery cells are touching each other. So what you need to do is put them back in the housing so they stay separated. Now measure the voltage. Oh, it's only about 4 volts. Either the battery discharged or I broke one of the wires. Alright, pull it back out. Cut, cut off the excess wires. Make a test and measure the voltage of these battery cylinders. And as you can see, that one's 1.5 volts. And there, I measured each of these cells and they all measure up to 1.5 volts. Next, I'm going to take these gloves and wear a face shield. Safety is always a priority. And now I'm going to go a little deeper and open up these battery cells. And now I want to see what's inside of these battery cells. Take some pliers and a battery cell and pull out the carbon electrode rod. And there we go, comes out just like this. Ah, as you can see on my glove, it's all dirty. This is why it's a good thing to wear gloves. Oh, and as you can see, it's just a simple carbon electrode. I can definitely use this for a future project. Put all four of those to the side. And now open up this cap. Comes off just like that. And as you can see, oh, and now flip out this little material that's covering it. Hmm, the plastic part and the spongy part is what insulates everything. Interesting. Oh, and as you can see, what's inside is actually manganese dioxide. I'm just going to simply scoop that out and put it into this jar because this manganese dioxide can be very useful and very interesting to use for future projects. Oh, and as you can see, it appears that there's paper inside. I guess the paper insulates the zinc housing from the manganese dioxide and the electrode, keeping the positive and negative separated. Next, I'm going to take a bag, and then I'm going to take these zinc cylinders and put them in here to save for a future project. Because zinc can be very useful for something. And now I have a mess. I have to clean up this manganese dioxide. So what I'm going to do is just brush off the excess and put it back inside the jar. And now just take some regular dish soap, squirt it on top, and now take a paper towel and just spread it around. Add some water and some more dish soap. Take a paper towel and wash up everything. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of vinegar and pour it on top. This part may not be necessary, but vinegar can react to manganese dioxide. So that should actually help with the cleanup. Looks like it's working, but in my opinion, dish soap seems to work the best. What I found that was useful inside is these pure zinc cylinders, slightly contaminated with the manganese dioxide, but these clear zinc cylinders, 
I need to clean out, and I can be able to use the zinc for many different experiments. Manganese dioxide, I've collected a very good amount. This whole jar is full of it, which is pretty heavy, and it's a good amount. Also, and I can also use this for future experiments. The top of this battery has these springs I might use, but otherwise it's kind of useless. What I like a lot is this battery case. The inside here can be very useful to use as a maybe a pen holder or something. And what's also very useful is these carbon electrodes. These carbon electrode rods I can definitely use for future experiments or to use for electrolysis to use something that doesn't corrode away right away, which can be very useful for chemistry. Or I plan on making a future project where I take one of these and grind it up and to be able to make conductive paint. But yeah, there you have it. The items that I found useful inside of a basic lantern battery. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTitech. I hope you learned something new. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course click on the bell icon to be notified of future SciTitech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.